Uh, the education system, as it currently uh, operates and as it currently delivers its information, is deeply, deeply boring to most kids. It doesn't inspire them, and and when they leave school, they are or or whenever they leave their education, they are so sick of being bored day after day, and they therefore equate being bored with being educated and learning, and they just stop doing it for the rest of their lives. And um, when really, uh, there's a, a vast, vast, amazing world beyond the, the, the myopic bounds of the postage stamp consensus version of everything, the mainstream everything, to be explored. And, and, and we should be inspiring kids, not boring them to death. What are we doing? For, for instance, algebra, right? If you want to if you want to learn algebra, I hate algebra. You need algebra, mm -hmm. then learn algebra when you need to learn algebra. You've got kids who are sitting at desks, look at this summer on uh, on, on incredibly uh, uh, hot lovely days when they could be climbing trees, when they could be pursuing their own interests, and what are they doing? They're sitting at a desk learning algebra. What does X equal? I don't care less. You make it equal what you like, whatever makes it happy, but just leave me alone. Yeah, but my but math teacher would have said, I hated, I I hated loads and detested algebra, but my math teacher would have said to me, the point of algebra is not doing those stupid sums with uh, letters and numbers, which you know a lot of people still have to do. It's to teach you methodical thought. If we're not educating kids in that way, how are they going to think? Hold on a second. No, no. I tell, I tell you the thought processes that are not taught, critical thought, critical thinking, questioning everything to see if it stands up to scrutiny instead of accepting it and, and, and uh, not questioning it because it's come from authority, because it's come from some academic with letters after his name, because it's some, come from some scientist who a little way down the road will be proved to be uh, mistaken. Um, it's critical thinking that we need. Uh, once people um, uh, question things, once, once young people are, are, are encouraged to question things, they go through their life questioning things. Therefore, when a politician says something, instead of accepting it, they question it. When a scientist says something, given the history that, that scientists have been saying things for, for, for hundreds of years that have turned out to not to be true, they question it. This is what we need, a critically thinking, questioning population. What any system of control doesn't want is a critically thinking, questioning population. And what, we're, what we have now, Howard, and it is, it is coming in so fast every day, is critical thinking and having alternative opinions and questioning what authority tells you becoming more and more suppressed and oppressed and people being intimidated into not doing it. All right, Whether let's park it there because we've got to take some commercials whatever. right now, David. So we're going to park it. You know, when we've done the podcast, we can run right through. But we're going to take some commercials right now. And I think we need a couple of minutes anyway just to refine our thoughts about that. But the one thing, and I'm talking to my listener here now, that David Icke lovers and David Icke haters can agree on, I think, is that the man we've got on here now is a man who made a lot of people start to question and put stuff out into the mainstream or the peripheries of the mainstream that while you may be outraged by it and not agree with it it made you think isn't that a good thing i'm not here saying it is because it's not my job to say it is or it's not i'm asking you to ask that question david ike will be back so will i in just a second here on the unexplained talk radio the unexplained talk radio david ike is uh, in the middle of a big Speaking to it, uh, it's Dublin next week, but it's always somewhere else, whether it's Australia, uh, they love him in the United States, lots of fans there, and of course here, where he packs out theatres and venues up and down the country. We talked, David, about this, this idea of free speech. Do you agree with me that there are some ideas and notions that don't deserve the oxygen of free speech. If you look, for example, at, uh, and I'm sure you know him, I'm, I'm not sure what you make of him, he's been on this show a long time ago and all he did was shout at me, but Alex Jones, uh, the so-called conspiracy theory broadcaster, 
has made a string of outrageous and unsubstantiated claims that have brought him into conflict with an awful lot of people now. And some aspects of the electronic media, the modern media, the social media, are in the process of partly closing him down now for, for some of those things. Um, you know, you understand, I guess you would agree with me that there are some notions and ideas that are perhaps beyond the pale. I mean, I'm not here sitting here saying that Alex Jones should be turned off. That's a matter for other people. You know, he's, he's doing his job and people are listening to him. That's not what I'm saying. But there are some ideas, perhaps, that don't deserve to be heard. And here you are saying free speech, total free speech. Uh, no, I don't agree that anything shouldn't be heard. Um, uh, if, if you, for instance, um, ha have a situation where you are urging people to burn a house down or you're urging people to do something to do with terrorism, there are laws against that. There are laws against that incitement. There are laws against um, inciting violence. My uh, point is this, once you start censoring what people can say before the point of delivery, you are by definition giving an authority the power to say what people can and cannot hear. Um, if people have a problem with someone saying something, then argue your point, put out information to show that they're talking nonsense. But once you start saying, this is not acceptable, therefore um, we're going to stop anyone hearing it, that is a tyranny. That is what the Nazis did when they burned the books. What we have now is digital book burning through uh, people like Google and Facebook. Um, any tyranny that comes to power, be it, be it far left, far right, or far anything, um, immediately it has the power to do so, wants to close down all information that challenges its narrative, all information that exposes the truth about what it's doing and what's behind it. And therefore, if we're going to have a free society, if we're going to talk about free speech, then we have free speech because if anyone doesn't have free speech, no one has it, because what is left is only the freedom to conform, not the freedom to speak your truth. And any sane and also mature society should be at peace with having people say what they think, whatever it is, then arguing against it, and of course having laws that say you cannot incite violence with your speech without consequence, you cannot uh, do this uh, uh, um, uh, 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 attack on this person with your uh, speech to, to, to do them, uh, uh, to encourage people to do them harm um, without consequence. But once you start censoring speech before the point of delivery, then you are going down a very dark road. And what we're seeing, Howard, now is what happens when you do that. Because you first of all say, um, you cannot incite uh, um, violence, therefore we're going to stop you doing that um, uh, by, by preventing you, your, your, what you say circulating. Okay, and, and people then say, well, well, in very large numbers say, well, that's fair enough, yeah, you, yeah, that's all right, yeah, but that's only the thin end of the wedge. We've started now. And then, oh, no, you can't say that, and then you can't say that, and then you can't say that. And we've now reached a point in this process, which is always the process. Just read, read the, um, the, uh, the methodology of Joseph Goebbels, the, uh, the Nazi propaganda minister, and you'll see that what's playing out now is actually exactly the techniques that he advocated and pursued in Nazi Germany. So we've reached the point now where you can't say this about this gender, you can't say this about this group, you can't say this about this, you can't say this about that, and what's happening is they're being picked off and picked off and picked off, which is exactly, again, the process described in 1984 by George Orwell. But the, the norms of society constantly change. What is acceptable Things that were said on comedy, th things that were said on com <laughs> comedy shows. Hang, hang on, let me, let me finish the point, and then we'll we'll get there. But things that okay. were said on comedy shows in the 1970s, which I saw, I was watching with my parents. 
you quite rightly could not utter these days. Why? Because we're more enlightened. We are constantly moving forward. Um, you can't just have everything out there because you have a less enlightened society and hopefully we are becoming better. I mean, you know, if you look back to the, the dark ages in this country, if you stole a loaf of bread, they'd probably hang you. We're a bit more enlightened than that these days. Um, you know, things constantly change, don't they? But we're talking about freedom of speech and freedom of expression. We're not talking about, you know, putting someone in jail for stealing a loaf. Um, and if people don't want to hear it, mm. then they won't, they, then, then the whole thing will die out anyway, because no one will be interested. And if it's nonsense, then people can come along in the public arena and show with evidence and information that it's nonsense. What, I, I, again, once you cross this line, of censorship before the point of delivery, you are going down a very, very dark, dark road. And we are going down that road now very, very fast, where there's less and less and less and less that you can actually say without, A, it, it doesn't circulate because the algorithms stop it, um, or the ghost banning uh, on the uh, internet, which I'm subject to, where you can actually post it, but the algorithms make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Um, you're going down this road of handing power over the information that people receive or don't receive uh, to some authority, and that authority is getting smaller all the time.